Databases are where the data is stored. So like our brains or libraries or filing cabinets, they contain vast amounts of data. But how do we get access to that data? Now you've probably heard of SQL, you may even know how to use it. If you're fluent in it, then you probably don't need to continue with this lesson, to be fair. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. SQL is also pronounced as SQL, just to confuse things a little more, I'm not sure why. I presume it's because it's difficult to pronounce as just three letters and throwing in a few vowels must help things along the way. But the point is, if you hear your engineers talking about SQL or MySQL, then don't worry, they're referring to SQL. SQL is a database specific programming language, and that means it can only be used with databases. SQL is the language used to get access to the data that you need from the relevant databases. Typically, all your engineers will be fluent in SQL, since it's one of the foundational languages for many programmers with a computer science background. An exception to this is perhaps your front-end team, who are probably more comfortable with UI or front-end languages, but there are exceptions, of course. It'll primarily be your engineers who use SQL, and you may have a reporting tool specifically for your product with custom metrics. Your engineering team will sometimes be responsible for maintaining this, and they will ultimately write the queries used. So if you're using a reporting dashboard or if you've got a dashboard set up with metrics for your product, the chances are that SQL is powering at least some of the calculations behind the metrics that you see in the dashboard. As a skill set, there are some who think that SQL is an essential skill for product managers. I've sat in meetings in previous companies where the head of product was completely dumbfounded that some of the product managers didn't know SQL. For me at the time, I had some basic SQL knowledge but I was quite surprised at the reaction of my colleague when the other product managers in the room didn't know SQL. It was seen as a must-have skill. And what I found after speaking to different product people is that some people think that it's a must-have skill and some people don't think it's necessary at all. There are a couple of reasons why you should learn SQL and why it's useful for you as a product manager. The first is that it removes the reliance on your engineering or data teams. So typically, as a product manager, if you want to get some metrics, you're either using a third-party tool such as Google Analytics or Mixpanel or Omniture or one of the others, and in which case, the tool does it for you. But sometimes you need to access the raw data yourself, and to do that, you need to interact with the database. And typically, what happens as product managers is that we go to our data teams or our engineers and we say, oh, can you build this report for me? I need this, this, and this. And then it goes into some backlog and then it gets prioritized and then you, a week later or maybe a month later you get what you want. Well, if you know how to use SQL and you know how to interact directly with the databases, then that removes that reliance on the engineers and the data teams. That means that you can ultimately get the data that you need. You can remove the need for third-party tools and you can interact directly with the data at its source. And finally, you'll get to understand where the data lives. So when you're sat in your planning sessions, you can make sure that any stories or features have the relevant fields added to the database because you know, for example, that payment records are kept in the payments table or the customer lifetime value is kept in the customer LTV table. And when you're sitting with your engineers, you can say, well, look, let's make sure that we put in extra fields into those tables so I can do my report later on. So let's look at an example of how SQL might work in practice. In this example, you can see that the product manager is asking a fairly typical question, which is, how many users are on a premium package paying $100 in Seattle? In order to retrieve information from the database, the first thing that needs to happen is that you need to establish a connection to the database. What do we mean by connection? Well, your database contains highly sensitive information which means you don't want anyone to be able to just randomly rummage around and grab whatever they want. If you want access to a database, you typically need a username and a password. You'll also have administrative rights determined by your administrator, so they might give you read-only access or read-only access to specific tables that they think that you might need. You need to connect to the database you want to get the information from it, and there are various ways to connect to a database, but in this program we're going to focus on the simplest ways that make sense for product managers. Your organization might have its own tools, and if you speak to your database engineers, you can find out which tool is most appropriate for your product and your organization. So back to our example. In this example, we want to find out how many users are on a premium package paying $100 in Seattle. To find out that, we would need to write a specific query which looks for those customers using the criteria 
that we provided. So this SQL statement says, I want to select all the customers from the customers table where the package is premium and the package price is $100 and the customer location is Seattle. The SQL queries the database, the database returns and it returns to you a set of results. Results are typically returned in tables. So in this example, we would say that we've queried the database and the database has returned a set of results.